for us, RPGs are a really broad category. There's like incredible diversity in what that word means for us. And it's really, you know, it's sort of almost a collection of different kinds of features, and you can pull them together in a whole variety of ways. You know, the story and the customization, the character creation, and choice with consequence uh, of your of the, how, the, how your personal heroic journey unfolds. And so that meaningful story and, and the way it's delivered, like in a very cinematic way in Star Wars The Old Republic, in a way similar to to Mass Effect, for example, you know, really it gives the players another reason to play. Like it's another reason, another thing that pulls you through the experience. And I think you know, both having played it, you know, Ray and I are really happy with how it's turning out. And I mean, sometimes you know, you're, in an MMO, you're thinking about all the usual stuff, like hey, progression, you know, fighting it out with other characters and PvP and all this stuff. But there's times, literally, when you're thinking about the story. Like you know, it's 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 really an interesting experience because up till now, that hasn't been a fundamental part. You know, in a real, I mean, people have done story, but not in the sort of the depth and the, so every fiber of the game that we've done. Uh, but it seems to be working really well. I mean, the fan feedback, we've been doing public testing, has been, it's been huge, and it's working. Countless people have died because of him. The Republic should be planning his head on a stake, not offering him protection. Arguably, a game like Grand Theft Auto or Red Dead Redemption, I just finished that recently, a wonderful game. Uh, there's a lot of RPG elements in that game, and yet it wasn't characterized that way. It was characterized as you know, more action-adventure, action game kind of thing. So you, you know, it's got a lot of attributes of the games we make as well. And they're kind of approaching the same problem from a different side. And we're kind of broadening our audience and broadening the kinds of features we put in our games, even as they're trying to add in more of the features traditionally associated with RPGs. I don't think that's a bad thing at all. You're almost more trouble than you're worth. Let the hostages go, and maybe you'll live long enough to explain yourself to the council. Creating an IP from scratch versus using a license is really the same thing. It's just kind of like how long has it been in development, how many iterations has it gone through, you know, like what's the canon and how has it developed over time. And for us to be able to be part of a creating a universe like Star Wars or Dungeons and Dragons or other IPs where we have a lot of reverence for, you know, it's 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 an honor. You know, it's an honor to work with the folks at Lucasfilm, Lucas Arts, and help to build some of that out in the Old Republic, for example, or Knights of the Old Republic before that. No, no, wait. You, you can't do this! You know, I think we enjoy the, the, the world of Dragon Age as an example of why you know, we wanted to create a new fantasy IP kind of from scratch, and you know, our teams are enjoying that quite a bit right now. I mean, as much as we have reverence for D&D &D in the past, and we enjoy working on that a lot, I think right now for fantasy, we're more focused on Dragon Age, and there's some other stuff we have in the pipe as well. It's a little bit different cut of that, but you never know what the future might bring.